if you don't know who Fuzz99 is, they're a TikToker who went viral about a year back and quickly became the most hated TikToker on the platform, mainly because of their extremely loud and over-the-top annoying videos, which mainly consisted of annoying faces, screaming, and overall the videos were just very hard to watch. And recently they were fired from their job because of a quote-unquote hater. Now I have not watched this video, nor do I know what to expect apart from the title, but I will say this. I feel like the internet tends to overreact to cringe videos in general and treat it like it's some sort of crime to make a bad video, so I would not be surprised if what this person is claiming happens to be true. And just going off of what I'm seeing here, if you're someone who went out of their way to get this person fired from their job, all because you did not like their content online, you are unironically the thing you swore to destroy. You are cringe and you are a massive loser. Now I could be totally wrong here because like I said, I haven't watched the video, so I'm only going off of what the title said. Although I did see this pop up in my recommended when searching up Fuzz99, so I guess that's that. Also, this is a 20 minute long video, so today's video is definitely going to be my biggest video yet, and I can only imagine my computer is going to have an absolute stroke when rendering this in. So go ahead and press that like button just for the sake of my computer's well-being, and also make sure to join the Discord server, discord.gg slash numerance. And without further ado, let's get into the video. I was recently hate crimes for being queer, and as a result of me being hate crimes for being queer, it ultimately led to me being fired from my job as a high school substitute teacher. I hate making content like this. I love making people laugh and smile and forget about all their troubles. I love helping people feel comfortable in their bodies and always preach that there's nothing ever wrong with being you. All right, we're already a minute into the video and I don't want to like come off as like really angry right off the bat, but I absolutely hate those people who portray themselves as nothing but kind and accepting and encouraging to everybody. Now, a little fun fact, when I was looking for background footage for the beginning of this video, I literally found a cringe compilation of Fuzz 99's TikToks. And in one of those TikToks, they literally say, and I quote, because who wants to be straight, right? As if being straight is a bad thing or a negative quality about someone. But it just sucks because you never know how the people around you, depending on where you are, are gonna react. And I'm grateful that I pass as a guy most of the time out in public. And at like a quick glance, me and her look like we could pass as a straight couple. It's like, blah. <laughs> Cause like nobody wants to be straight. Look, I am not against jokes, but do not portray yourself as this kind and accepting person when you make fun of straight people. I know damn well if you saw someone make a joke about a gay person's sexuality, then you would have a full on meltdown. So get off your high horse and stop acting like you're morally better than everyone else. And that you should always identify and do the things that make you happy and feel most like you. I love learning about my community and I love helping educate others about my community too. What happened to me wasn't fair to me or to my students that I helped make a better and safer environment for every single day. Right now in America, queer teachers are under attack and are constantly being targeted and kicked out of the classrooms for being who they are and for helping students feel welcomed for who they are. Now listen, I don't know if I'm being nitpicky here, but didn't you say you were a substitute teacher? Now look, I don't know how much time this person spent with their class or classes that they substituted for, but from my past experiences of having substitute teachers, I barely knew them and that wasn't because I didn't pay attention. That's because you barely get any time with the teacher, okay? They substitute for like a day and then they're gone for a few months and then they might come back. They are called substitute teachers for a reason. You are a temporary replacement until their actual teacher that they know comes back. You are almost acting as if you got ripped away from these students that were like family to you when in all reality you probably didn't even know them that well. Like I don't know guys, am I crazy? Let me know. I hope that by telling my story I can make other queer teachers who have gone through similar experiences feel less alone and that I'm able to use this as an opportunity to say goodbye to my students that I didn't get the chance to say goodbye to because that opportunity was taken away from me by a hateful, miserable person who had too much time on their hands. For us to start, we have to go back a whole year ago to when I was being targeted by hateful extremist groups and really blew up online. Particularly by that one cis lady who is accused of inciting bomb threats against schools, libraries, and hospitals, and who also just got appointed to an advisor position on the Oklahoma Educational State Department's Library Committee, which is all another mess that we're not gonna get into right now. Any podcast, YouTube video, TikTok, or any content mentioning my name during that time would get millions of views. 
I had hundreds of thousands of people harassing me online and some even went to more extreme lengths to harass me in real life. One of which ways was reporting me to school. All right, so we have a lot to unpack here. So first, let's start off with the quotation marks, hateful extremists. Now, okay, look, I understand people can definitely take things too far, especially when it comes to people who make cringe content online, but extremists? Now, look, obviously there are probably gonna be some psychopaths and the millions of people that hate this person, but the majority of people criticizing you are just people who do not enjoy the constant screaming and cringe dances you would do on TikTok. I don't know, it just seems to me like this person is trying to paint the narrative that anyone who speaks negatively about them are extremists targeting them trying to ruin their life when in reality people just don't like you because you're cringe and secondly i don't think teachers should be social media influencers i'm just gonna go ahead and say it if you're a teacher you should not be a social media influencer the amount of problems that comes with those two being combined is just absurd and this whole situation is a great example of why the two don't mix and third and finally harassment in real life now like i said earlier the internet tends to take cringe very seriously and people will go to to insane extents just to cause as much harm as they can to someone just because they are cringe. I mean, it really is just sad and pathetic, but hey, that's just the world we live in. But that is why you don't become a social media influencer if you are a teacher. Like, do you really think that these low lives who think cringe is the worst crime known to man, do you really think that they're above going to your school that you work at and potentially doing something to your class or harassing your class or harassing you in person? I'm just saying, you'd be surprised how low people go. In September of last year, I was called into HR's office for one, being reported by the haters, and two, apparently the freshmen were writing my username on whiteboards, and the school wanted to make sure I wasn't self-promoting my brand, which I wasn't. The freshmen had a very hard time adjusting to the fact I worked at that school and freaked out on the daily because I worked at school. Again, like I said earlier, this is why teachers and being social media influencer just doesn't go together. And all the other kids at school hated the freshmen and would be like, you guys are stupid. Why are you freaking out? It is just mall. Chill out. Jeez, bro. Freaking freshmen. It was then during this meeting, though, I explained that I was internet famous and that I make LGBTQ educational content on the internet and that I was targeted towards the end of summer and that our very own town's manager was aware I was being harassed as well as the local police department being informed and then later involved. At the end of the meeting, my manager said word for word and I never forgot this. I don't care if you swear like a sailor or post whatever you want to post. It is your social media and you can do whatever you want to do with it. Hearing those words and knowing that the school supported me and was going to have my back through that mess motivated me to keep creating and to keep going and made me believe that the haters couldn't take my job away from me. Okay, call me crazy, but just because they said you can do whatever you want with your social media doesn't mean they're on your side. Now, I'm just saying this right now because I have a suspicion they're going to try and take that and take it out of context or twist the meaning of that and try and push this little narrative that they were lied to or they were betrayed and now they're a victim, which obviously just doesn't make sense. Or so I thought. On October 30th, 2023, I received an email from my HR manager asking to sit down to talk about my social media posts. I hadn't posted about working at school on TikTok in a couple of weeks, and the only post I could think of was where I let the art club kids face paint my face to practice before a big football game. And I thought for some reason HR wasn't going to be happy. I let them face paint my face and were going to yell at me, but that wasn't the case at all. Considering the comments on this video were so horrible, I do believe this was the motivation for the hater to commit the crime that they did. The morning of November 2nd, before my meeting with HR, I was notified by email by our substitute booking website that all of my jobs that I had booked out till March were taken away from me and I was released from working them. Immediately, 
I got a gut sinking feeling in my stomach and realized something more serious was going on and I had no clue what it was. When I walked into the meeting, my HR manager asked me if I knew why I was here. I said I had no idea, besides wanting to talk about my social media posts. They then pulled out a yellow folder and slid two screenshots of two old thirst traps across the table to me. And I was just like... Oh my god! Wow! Oh my god, I haven't seen these videos in forever! Oh my god! This is from within the first month of me making TikToks every day. When the gays were using TikTok as a dating app. Oh my god. I still had long hair. I didn't go by mall yet or fuzz. Wow. Alright, look, maybe this is just me being nitpicky, but if you're gonna make a serious video, or in quotation marks, serious video, how about tone it back with all the jokes and skits? Also, there is no way you're about to tell me that they are homophobic for telling you, hey, maybe you shouldn't be posting thirst traps when you're a teacher. Like, is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask for you to not post thirst traps if you're a teacher? Also, they mentioned somebody committing a crime. I'm really interested to see what that crime is. These'll, these'll be four years old in two months. That's crazy. Holy crap. Oh my god. It very much was like how Tina Fey described seeing her old content to Chris Olsen in a recent interview. Do you feel like it's easy for you to remember a lot of the things that you've done? Sometimes I will see something from SNL or 30 Rock and like I'll be in a clip and I'll be like, I literally have no memory of doing that. Sure. Wait a minute. Four years? Yeah. Look right here at the timestamp on the video. It literally says right here when the video was posted and made. Oh my god! We were planning on cutting ties with you today, but this... This could change some things. A person sent an email to the school this morning with these videos attached, complaining and wanting you fired. Knowing the haters too, they probably also threaten the school in some way too. Wow, I can't believe this. Kia, that person went through thousands upon thousands of my videos to find these. In my first two years alone, I was putting out two to three videos every single day of the week and even on holidays. Those videos are buried. They aren't active videos, they are not being pushed by the algorithm. They are dead. Guys, look, maybe I'm absolutely stupid, but does it matter? It's still public. Your students can still go see them. It doesn't matter how many videos they have to scroll down. If they can find it, then they can find it. It's your job to private stuff like that. And if it got brought up by somebody, then that's your fault. Also, I'm still waiting to find out which crime this hater, in quotation marks, has committed. Because last time I checked, showing somebody a video that is public is not committing a crime. I highly doubt a parent here or student here would have gone through and watched thousands of my videos and spent all those hours watching trying to find these videos in the hopes of getting me fired. Yeah, no, it wasn't a student here or a parent from the school district that submitted these videos to us. It was someone not from our community. Ah, I see. Great. You know you represent the school, right? What you post represents the school. And I called it. See, I just knew they would do that. The school isn't wrong to tell you that you can do whatever you want with your social media, because you can. But don't be surprised when they find out that you have thirst traps on your social media pages and then you get fired. The school isn't in the wrong here. You are. You are responsible for what goes on your social media pages, not the school. Yeah, but I never mention our school's name or post inappropriate content and always go by my preferred name and not my government name. And I also am signed to a talent agency and have a talent manager who handles all of my brand deals and I work hand in hand with big names companies making advertisements for their brands while representing their company as well as my own. And I make a living every day creating content on the internet. Then you have absolutely no business being a teacher. What is the point of this video? I am so confused now. You do? 
The rest of the meeting was spent scrolling through my TikTok and my HR manager being pleasantly surprised and pleased with my content as well as showing them how much I post and how long it takes to even scroll back just to a year ago. Wow. I cannot believe you make such lovely videos and help people and make an income while you do it. I'm going to take these notes and circle back with the superintendent and the principal and it will ultimately be up to them to decide what they want to do with this decision. And until I hear from them, consider yourself suspended. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sitting down with me and getting my side of things instead of just firing me. I really appreciate it and I'm going to go home and go take down those videos. Oh, don't feel like you have to take them down. We're not telling you that you have to take them down, okay? Oh no, they're old. I have no problem taking them down. And besides, they don't represent my brand or the school and they're just hurting everyone right now, so I'm gonna go home and take them down. After that, I went home and I took the videos down and sent a follow-up email saying that I took the videos down and thanked them again for letting me tell my side of the story and that I love working with my students and would do anything for them. You know, the story is really just throwing me for loops right now because I'm confused. Is this a happy ending? Is this a bad ending? Is this person mad? Is this person happy? I can't tell anymore. However, knowing the decision was up to the superintendent, who is a white cis older male and who I've never met and has no idea who I am or what I look like, and the principal, who is also a white cis male, who gave me the vibes that they were not the biggest fan of me and never really knew how to interact with me because of who I am, made me feel like the chances of me not getting fired were very low. A few days after the meeting, however, my art teachers all reached out to me and were like, Where have you been? Why is there another substitute subbing in the art classes right now? Where are you? Because I eat lunch with them every day, and I'm always the first sub offered to substitute the art classes because I make art and I know what I'm doing and I'm able to help the students with their art projects. And I just really love it and all oh, the chaos it brings. Mm -hmm. And so I filled them in on everything that had happened over the last few days. And they ultimately decided and agreed that they would write a letter on my behalf to the principal stating why I shouldn't be fired and focusing on all the good that I do in and for the school every single day. All right, maybe this is about to sound very harsh and I'm sorry if it does, but I'm just gonna keep it real here. You are a substitute teacher. That means you're a temporary replacement for a regular teacher. You are not as important as a regular teacher. I do not know why, but this entire video, you kind of walked around and pranced around with this sort of entitlement and this sort of like almost narcissistic feeling of self-importance and value to the school system when in reality all you are is just a brightly colored substitute teacher you aren't special okay you are no better than any other substitute teacher and i can promise you this if another substitute teacher who was a in quotation marks cis straight white male or whatever you were saying and they were bringing a lot of distractions and attention to the school via social media then i promise you they would be fired too my chances of not getting fired felt a lot better after they submitted that letter, I'll be honest. Two weeks after my suspension and a week after the letter had been submitted, I hadn't heard a word yet. I reached out to HR to see if a decision had been made yet, and almost immediately my HR manager emailed back and said they had decided on going through with firing me. Which broke my heart. I had felt so ashamed when I was fired at first. I have never been fired from a job before, let alone one that I enjoyed doing. But then I started thinking, and I remembered and got so angry when I remembered the fact that the school in the past has protected a male teacher who went to jail, was accused of beating his wife, and who still works at the school while students frequently look up his mugshot and laugh at him. And another male teacher who was caught with screenshots saved to his computer of students in their bikinis that he stole from their personal Instagrams. And it just felt so wrong that these men could be and were protected by the school while the only 
out an openly queer teacher at school was hate crimes and then ultimately led to the school firing them. Yeah, honestly, there isn't really much I can say regarding that because, well, I don't know if they did that and I'm not going to sit here and pretend they didn't do it, but that doesn't change anything Fuzz did and it also doesn't change Fuzz's slightly narcissistic demeanor. Like every minute of this video I keep going, it just gets more and more narcissistic. I mean, really, this video is just starting to reek of self-importance and while I cannot defend the school's decision making, I'm also not going to defend Fuzz. Just because there's two wrongs, that doesn't make a right. It just filled me with rage. And to anyone out there who thinks I'm lying and that I didn't have a positive impact on the school can take my ex's word for it, who was also queer and understood how important queer representation was and how important my representation was for the queer students and who texted me this one day when we were together and I had told them I had helped a queer student. Immediately after I was fired, I reached back out to the teachers who had written a letter on my behalf to ask for guidance and for help and to fill them in and I had no idea what to do. The teachers went ahead and talked to the teachers union for me and I was advised to reach out to ACLU. When I reached out to ACLU, they told me they don't handle independent employer cases and sent me lists of resources and firms and lawyers that I could contact that could possibly help me with my case. Using my anger, I fought tooth and nail and reached out to multiple firms and lawyers every single day. I wasn't actively working at school when I originally made those thirst traps and quit working for the school for almost a full year back in 2021. I felt and feel like the content I made before I quit should not be allowed to be used against me. And how about when you become a teacher, private the content? At the end of the day, nobody else is responsible for your social media besides you. Now I'll go ahead and sum up anything beyond this point because from here the video basically ends. So basically they wanted to take legal action and they reached out to a bunch of firms and none of the firms actually wanted to accept and take legal action. But at the end of the day, Fuzz was told that they were wronged by the school and then after that it turns into a little sob story and that's basically it. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and also join the Discord server, discord.gg slash and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.